Council meetings are long and boring. Wouldn't it be great if they were short and unboring? This is why I have invented the five minute meeting. <laughs> All right. Ashton City Council meeting of April 19th. Uh, this one says, oh, get ready. We've got 27 speakers tonight, so here we go. And this one uh, was not there at the top. Spoiler alert, she shows up at some point. I don't know when she does. And then a special presentation by the Tree Commission, their annual report. Uh, 41 trees were approved to remove uh, last year, and that's uh, pretty normal. And then uh, Ashland is recertified as a Tree City USA 37th year. It's a, a record of some sort. Uh, we are inventorying all street trees. And uh, apparently at 233 4th Street, that's where the uh, Tree of the Year winner is. And uh, uh, we are celebrating Arbor Day by planting a tree somewhere. And then uh, a public forum, a uh, woman with uh, half a husband on the screen said uh, she moved here from Green Springs, speaking on behalf of the bees and the birds. And uh, 5G is to be considered, and we are electrical beings, as are deer, cats, and dogs. And then a guy without video said EMFs are uh, kill plants. And a new tower on Eagle Mill Road is coming, and uh, we should revise the city ordinances today. And then a woman with no video said, uh, the new 5G tower on Eagle Mill Road? Oh, our cries must get louder. COVID shots are activated by 5G towers. Hmm, interesting. And then the original 5G lady said, uh, Australians living near uh, uh, TV towers in 2009 that got leukemia and cancer quadruples if you live near a tower and uh, birds are dying and Ashland needs to push against all corporations. And then the woman who wears glasses, she says, uh, Firewise is great and uh, volunteer commissioners are great and I will read all the vacancies on all commissions and then she did. And then uh, a guy in a bedroom said, uh, 5G increases the ability of surveillance and uh, government control, and birds and bees are dying. And a woman with a hat and her friend says that the FCC is a, a captured agency and council is aware of this 5G danger. And then the city manager's report, uh, he says, uh, here's a look ahead. He says, uh, we're gonna have special meetings in May uh, on the budget, and they're gonna be two uh, new meetings. And uh, this guy goes, oh, is this gonna be like a lecture? Or are we gonna have a lot of give and take, or what's the deal? And the manager goes, oh, it'll be both. There's gonna be plenty of decisions Making's going to happen. And this one goes, oh, that maybe we 5G discussion needs to be moved up. Because, look, a lot of people are pretty angry about that. And the city guy goes, well, we are prepping for that. And that takes a whole bunch of uh, city prep time to get ready for that uh, 5G thing. So that's why it's scheduled later in the summer. But we'll try to we'll try to move it up. And then consent agenda. Oh, item two. Everyone loved that one. That was fast right away. Item one was pulled, though. And here we go. It's a liquor license for Trap Door which used to be the Vinyl Club on Will Dodge Way. And the police chief says, well, you know, initially I hated this idea, uh, but uh, I walked in there and they've changed the whole room. And I'm confident that this is a, in a good place and we should be giving it a chance. And the fire chief walked in and said, yeah, same. And then the city manager said, uh, FYI, there are ideas that uh, Will Dodge Way could be completely pedestrian, TBD. Uh, I, that's a new uh, fun idea I just heard there, right? And then... Uh, uh, the uh, uh, public speakers uh, was a guy in a baseball cap who owns the trap door. You know, he says, oh, we are not Vinyl Club 2. We invested a lot of money into making it a lounge with a chef and a mixologist, not a bartender. And uh, this is not a crappy dance club. And then this guy goes, ah, I was against this at first. And I went over and met the, sh the owner and I saw the space and I, I'm all for it. And uh, this one, she goes, uh, uh, she says, hey, uh, uh, this is not what it was, but it is but what it is going forward. It's pretty, it's a deep, deep one right there. And then uh, this one goes, I think the LGBTQ community is gonna like this. And then uh, this guy goes, ah, uh, I move we approve this, but uh, with restrictions and uh, I like the idea, but maybe uh, some restrictions. And uh, there is some list of police presented, so we should you have all those on there. And then this one goes, oh, this, that, that, that was a copy and paste from the old vinyl club, that shouldn't apply here, those restrictions. And the police guy said, don't focus on those restrictions. That was cut and paste framework from the old thing. And then this one goes, this one goes, boy, that restriction stuff, that doesn't work for me. And then uh, this guy goes, uh, I remove all restrictions. <laughs> and then uh, uh, this one goes, eh, okay, uh, I move we approve that, no restrictions, all approved. And then community development block grant funding, CBDG, CD, CDBGs. Uh, the city gets HUD money. Uh, uh, every year for or for housing, and only nonprofits can apply for that money. And this year, the uh, uh, city housing department recommends 128,000 for Aura options for helping residents of Ashland. And that's where the old Super 8 Motel used to be there on Ashland Street. And then uh, 25,000 to Maslow Project, and they help specifically homeless children and families. You know, uh, school stuff and everything. And then uh, and then there's the last chunk of money from COVID CARES money from the Federal government there, the last of that is uh, $40,000 to Aura, uh, some more on there, and $40,000 to Rogue Retreat, 
and they run the, the tiny uh, house shelters, those uh, pallet shelters there, and that uh, and that church over there. And then, oh boy, here we go. So, uh, uh, I said, I thought that rogue retreat facility. Uh, was temporary, but will this money make them permanent? And the rogue retreat person said, uh, well, we're planning to go to October because it's our lease, and uh, we were hoping to get to there at least. And uh, this one goes, hey, uh, uh, I want to, uh, city needs to provide a permanent spot for our unhoused community like this, you know, it's a permanent, not not the the temporary rogue thing. And then this guy goes, ah, he goes, uh, uh, he says, hey, well, giving 40000 to that rogue retreat, what what if they never leave? And, <laughs> and then uh, this one says, hey, uh, I move we approve the 128k and 25k to Maslow and Aura, and that's all approved. And then uh, she goes, and I'll split it up, and then I'll say, I move to award that 40,000 to Aura and to the Rogue Retreat only if Rogue Retreat promises to close this, uh, close itself down over the next six months or something like that. And uh, the mayor goes, oh man, I don't know, I'm a, I'm against that idea. Uh, Rogue Retreat's the only place uh, for homeless families in the area. I'm like, oh, I don't know that. And this one says, uh, she goes, uh. Uh, what did she say? She goes, oh, uh, this is this is a vote for the CARES uh, COVID money, and this should be separate from uh, future plans for what rogue retreat those pallet shelter houses are going to end up doing. Those are two different conversations. You can com combine those two. And then, uh, so then they voted, and uh, it failed. Four to two. So uh, no no stipulations on that money requiring them to, to, to uh, wind down. And then, uh, so this one says, I, I say we just give them the money without that whole winding down you know, requirement. And that passed uh, completely, uh, uh, all approved. And then uh, marijuana funds, like $200,000 in marijuana funds, and they have to go to affordable housing. So the city said, uh, I'll have it 60000 for Habitat for Humanity for solar panels on some, I don't know where that is. And then, uh, and then uh, Aura gets 55000 more and Rogue Retreat gets 55000 more. That's all approved. And then uh, the uh, high school public art request. Uh, the school has this old otter lifter canoe and they want to put it in front of the school as a piece of sculpture as it recognizes the land and connects to native truths. And actually pretty cool looking. All approved. And then uh, uh, school district fee adjustment. The city manager said uh, uh, there's a new cap on development fee of $30,000. That any on any project that the schools do, zero questions, no discussion, and this one goes. I move we approve this, and by the city staff, they did great work as always. And uh, and then this guy goes. Uh, this guy goes. Uh, hey, I'm glad this is happening, but this happened because the community development department uh, fees are out of control. But that's another conversation. That was all approved. And so was, uh, there was no discussion because um, nobody wanted to embarrass the planning commissioners. There, because uh, this was like a two hundred fifty thousand dollar refund to the Ashland School District that the school board, board really had to fight way too hard to get, and uh, I believe a, a mea culpa would have been nice in this scenario. And then the uh, supplemental budget item, uh, we didn't appropriate some money. Appropriations didn't happen. We needed to appropriate it, appropriate, 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 and uh, we need to record PERS money on a different budget spreadsheet thing. That was all approved, which is. Ticky tacky accounting stuff. And then this one goes, she goes, uh, where is she? Uh, she, goes, she goes, hey, Sunday the 24th is free yard waste disposal day at the dump there off of Valley View Road. And uh, that was at the end of the meeting. You're welcome.